Like to call the meeting to order the Scarborough Town Council meeting of Wednesday, June 6, <coughs> 2018. And if you would rise and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Roll call. Councilor Bayline. Present. Councilor Rowan. Here. Councilor Foley. Here. Councilor Katarina. Here. Councilor Hayes. Here. Councilor Chiazzo. Here. Chairman Dunnevin. Present. Uh, general public comments. Anyone having uh, wishing to address the town council on matters not on the agenda, uh, just state your name and address and proceed. Welcome. Good evening. My name is Rocco Risbera, 287 Black Point Road. I'm here representing Crossroads Holdings LLC tonight. And I just wanted to take a minute of the council's time to thank them for acting uh, at the May 16th meeting um, because you did uh, act at that meeting and, and go ahead and take the vote and not wait till tonight. That allowed us to move forward. We are currently working two uh, letters of intent with two uh, end users for that light industrial zoned area. Um, those letters of intent are, I can't name who they're with right now, but uh, they're, I can assure the council that they're both uh, companies that, that Scarborough would be very happy to have uh, here in our town. So I wanted to let you know that, that, that it was, I know some of you felt uncomfortable uh, with taking a vote so quickly after, uh, after public hearing, uh, but that, that time frame did mean something to us. It also means that we can make our submission to the planning board and we should get on the July agenda for the master plan process to start in that light industrial zone area, which will get that ball all rolling and should allow us to, to keep uh, on track with our approval process so that uh, these, these businesses can come to our town. So I just want to just say thank you and uh, give you a little update on, on where we're at. So thank you. Thank you, Ray. Anyone else wishing to address the council? Closed public comment, uh, minutes of May 16, 2018. I'll, I'll accept the motion. So moved. Second. Any corrections or amendments? Seeing none, all in favor? Opposed? It's unanimous. There are no adjustments to the agenda, and I have signed the treasurer's warrants, having shown up early. Order 18 30, 7 p.m. public hearing on the proposed amendments to Chapter 405, the Zoning Ordinance of the Town of Scarborough, Maine, Section Roman Numeral 4, Definitions, and Section Roman Numeral 17B, Hagus Parkway District uh, B, Permitted Uses, Conventional, and Planned Developments. And I'll ask uh, the Planning Director, Jay Chase, to introduce this matter. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Knowing that this is public hearing, I we went over this a bit at your last meeting, or actually meeting in April. I'm not going to spend too much time, but I do want to give you some updates on uh, what's happened since your April 18th first reading. Um, by way of quick background, as you just mentioned, um, this is a proposed amendment to both the Higgins Parkway District and our definition section. Um, and where the conversation really began um, with uh, conversations with the SEDCO staff and, and my staff looking at um, how the uh, treatment of accessory storage of materials and goods was treated in the Haggis Parkway district differently than, any, than other um, commercial districts. It had certain limitations that, weren't, um, uh, uh, that aren't present in those other commercial districts. It's really trying to equalize that. Um, so there's a proposal to delete sort of a, a language that talks about accessory warehousing and distribution uses in the Haggis Parkway district and really leave it as just standard accessory uses, which is an otherwise defined term in our district. As we looked at that um, language, the other thing that came to, came to bear is, well, what does warehousing and distribution mean? We have those uses as listed permitted uses in other zones, the industrial district and light industrial district. And so where uses are listed as permitted in one district, that means and they're not list, if they're not listed in another district, then they're not otherwise allowed there. So we thought it'd be helpful to actually have definitions of these two types of activities. Um, and so those were also being proposed. 
at first reading, some council members raised some good questions. They're always good questions about uh, <laughs> some of the language and if they're um, uh, in, about, around some clarity of language. And so um, we, we took those notes. We held a public hearing with planning board and received some similar comments. Um, so staff, Karen and I, were able to take uh, both council and planning board's uh, thoughts back to our long range planning committee and um, talk about those and make some modifications to the language, um, which we hope uh, helps to uh, um, assuage some of those earlier concerns. So I believe in your packets what you have is a sort of a, a revised version. Um, it's, these are um, really language changes. I would say they're not substantive changes. The concept's still the same, but they really do help clarify and codify exactly what we're proposing to do. So um, that's my... Questions from the council for uh, Mr. Chase. Uh, thank you, Jay. Uh, public comment. Anyone wishing to address this matter, please approach the podium. Uh, this is a public hearing, so uh, we'll have a second reading uh, at our next uh, uh, meeting, at which point there will be a an amendment uh, to uh, consider the changes that were proposed that ran, were run through the Long Range Planning Committee and the Planning Board. Thank you. <clears throat> Old business, not at this time. Uh, new business. <clears throat> uh, order 18-41, first reading, and schedule a public hearing on the proposed amendments to Chapter 601, the Traffic Ordinance, Section 25A1, to eliminate year-round parking along Black Point Road. And I'll ask the Ordinance Chair Councilor Katarina, you introduced this one. Uh, yes, thank you. Um, actually, I should say just on a portion of Black Point Road, I know some people were a little confused by that, mm -hmm. but basically what this is, it was brought to me by the police department, uh, and I, it's, it's having a, a small area in front of where the Scarborough Beach entrance is be, be banned to year-round parking, because in winter there have been issues with people not paying attention and thinking it's not open when it is and da -da, and blocking and, and they ha have had issues there so the police department brought this forward. We discussed it in uh, ordinance and uh, moving it to the council. So uh, we did have them change it um, to be 50 feet on either side of the, the post. So. Thank you. Public comment. Anyone public wishing to address this matter please approach the podium. Accept the motion. So moved. Second. Discussion. Council Caterina, anything further? No, want to no, I think it's pretty straightforward. I think it'd be very helpful because I know when I walk down there in this year, um, this winter, um, I happen to walk right into a hornet's nest of issues that were going on um, with someone who was parked too close and they couldn't get someone in and um, whatever. So I've seen some of the issues. Myself. So, can I, Foley. I just have a question. Sure. So, yep. is it is it just it was so the issue is that maybe in the winter perhaps the snow banks are so high people don't see where the entrance is. So they block the entrance. That's what I, the concern is. No, they assume that that there's that it's closed. That it's closed, and then sight distance for people because it's open most of the year. Yeah. And actually, I believe it's open all year on. round to some pass holders. Yeah. yeah. So, um, yeah, this is a safety so it's issue. A, it's a safety issue. Right. Okay. Other. Comments? Comments? Yeah, I guess, I mean, I'm down there quite a bit. I got two dogs and down in that area, and I've, I've never noticed it being a problem. I haven't gotten any emails or anything from anybody suggesting that's a problem. Just 50 feet is quite, it's like five car lengths, right, on either side of the entrance? Yep. Approximately? Less. I think Less. Uh, 18 to 20 feet is a parking space. <clears throat> so I'm just, I'm just, you know, and again, it becomes an issue, too, of I know we've passed some ordinance recently where enforcement of these things are really becoming an issue, whether it's, it's the stickers on trash cans or some other okay. things. I'm just wondering, it hasn't percolated for me. I've been down there quite a bit. I haven't seen anybody blocking the entrance and exit. You're it, fortunate. Well, but it, but it, hasn't, it yeah. hasn't bubbled up. I mean, right. usually we get some type of emails or right. notifications from folks that there's an issue. I haven't observed it, so I'm just yeah. curious about I, I, did, did this come from the police department? Yes, it came from the police department, and it was quite an issue this, this winter, and I was getting emails 
uh, from constituents and also uh, calls from the police department. So just asking. I, I, uh, I'm there often, uh, and what I have observed is that when they have a line to get in, uh, uh, they actually stack them on the beach side of the road, the mm -hmm. side on which these 50-foot setbacks, uh, uh, because there's no way really to do a U-turn, so that if you're trying to get in line uh, to enter the park, uh, you're not going to drive all the way down to Ferry Beach, turn around and come back. Uh, people would be turning around in other people's <coughs> driveways, which is inappropriate. And so I, I think they've had a practice of actually have people lining up, going in the wrong direction to enter the park. Mm -hmm. And I, I, uh, that's the only condition that I've ever observed. Yeah. Councillor Kevin. Yeah, and that's in summer. Um, this issue is more in the winter because summer there's no parking. There's because I checked the right, sign. There is I no checked parking. the ordinance because yeah. there's no parking along that stretch from what May to September May or something. May September yeah. 15th. Um, this is more to address the winter issues because Scarborough Beach is a popular place to walk on mm -hmm. in the winter for a number of people, and they do park in the street. I'm one of them, um, and in the last this winter in particular, they had. An, uh, few incidents with people, I got calls from people who got tickets, and it was just, there's a lot of miscommunications going on about uh, what's allowed and not down there, that to me this makes sense, it just makes it very clear, very concise, that year round, you know, just stay clear of that particular area, you can park anywhere else, you know, along that side. And, and Councilor Hayes raises a good point, is it an overreach in terms of the distance? And I would say 50 feet, if this is the, the problem is around the entranceway. 50 feet probably is okay. I mean, I, I'm not gonna second guess the police department on it because I think that's, you know, that's three cars. And so it wouldn't take much, you wouldn't be, par you wouldn't be prohibited from parking very far. You'd still be at the split rail fence and, and being able to enter right. there. So, Peter. Yeah, I think I'd just like to make a request, though. I think, you know, Council Katarina said she'd received a, several emails complaining about it. Those types of things should be shared with all of us so that we kind of know there is an issue. This, this was, I, I've not seen a single email about this, so it, it kind of surprises me that it, the police are concerned. So and maybe, I, maybe we can get a little more information sure. for the public hearing. Yeah. Uh, and the second reading, yeah. so that we, we are satisfied yeah. that we're dealing with something that's real. I, sort of did, did, I, I heard you say you, we intended this to only be on the eastern side of the street. Yes. Because um, uh, my read of this doesn't suggest doesn't that it's that. only one side. I thought so, too, and I yeah, wasn't I quite sure. It uh, could say eastern. We could, do you want me to amend it? Can, can we get it? Well... It does say entrance and exit. See, it, it says yeah. the intersections. Five, right? And so I read it about five times trying to figure yeah. out from a directional point of view, was it correct or not? And I figured some someone in here would. <laughs> uh, why don't we why don't we ask the, who, who drafted them? Was this? Uh, I think Larissa or actually drafted it, but it was based on input from the police department. If, right. it's, if it serves you, we can certainly have them present at the public yeah. hearing to just explain yeah. what their observations are and why they brought That would be great. Yeah, that would and, be really and helpful. It, I think the council would appreciate sure. if Larissa would look at the language to make sure the east, west, south, north, south references are correct. <clears throat> if, if that's the intent, that it should only get right. on right. Yep. Good. Uh, further discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? Opposed? Unanimous. Thank you. 18-42, uh, act on the request from the Appointments Negotiations Committee to approve the recommendations to the various committee boards. I'll ask Councillor Babine to introduce this matter. And for the record, I did want to explain that tonight's request is actually to approve. Um, usually it goes through a two-step uh, two process, but we've been requested by several of the committees that are receiving new members to expedite this because they are having trouble with quorums. Um, and getting members to attend. So um, we want to uh, ask for your consideration to be able to approve those this evening. Um, and I'm happy to do this in the form of a motion, um, if someone will then second it. Um, the cable TV, I'm sorry, the um, 
Appointments Committee recommends for the Cable Access Television Committee to appoint Art Dillon with a term to expire in 2018, Douglas Forrester and Benjamin Howard with a term to expire in 2019, Julie Kuchenberger, Richard Lizell, and Mark Maroon with terms to expire in 2020. For the Coastal Waters and Harbor Advisory Committee, the Appointments Committee recommends Michael Winch to be removed from the committee due to a lack of attendance, that Calvin Bailey and Maria Odlin um, be appointed as full voting members to fill a term to expire in 2018, and to appoint Peter Angus as an alternate with a term to expire in 2018. For the Senior Advisory Committee, the committee recommends Carol Spencer to be moved to a full voting member with a term to expire in 2018. The Zoning Board of Appeals it, um, recommends um, Melina, I'm sorry, the uh, committee recommends uh, Melina Torrens on the Zoning Board of Appeals to be um, um, appointed a full voting member with a term to expire in 2019. And that was in a form of a motion. Second. Uh, public comment. Anyone wishing to comment on the appointments motion? Please approach the podium. Uh, debate discussion, and I'll recognize Councillor Babine. So, um, of course, whenever we have uh, new members and even returning uh, cit or citizens who have an interest, that's wonderful to have the names coming forward. Uh, while all of our committees are very special to all of us, um, it's nice to see that we have six voting members on the cable access television. Councillor Chiazzo, I told you I would get that thing started. <laughs> um, there is still one full voting member and an alternate that could be appointed to that committee, but. Uh, their goal um, is um, to get started as quickly as possible. And um, it's nice to see that uh, Peter Angus is returning. He is a longtime member of the Shellfish Committee many, many moons ago. Um, so to have him back on the uh, coastal waters and getting him involved is a nice addition as well. And Councilor Bayman, I'll accept a motion to suspend the rules. Um, it's already in the motion itself, so you don't need to change that because of the way that it was worded by the clerk. Good. Thank you. Yep, thank you. Uh, other comments, Councilor Kaiser. Uh, just for public clarity, everybody whose uh, date was expiring 2018 is December 31st. Yes. Okay. okay. Thank you. And I have no comment on the public cable. <laughs> Whether there was a suspend the. I don't believe so. To no. Approve no. The it, it it probably is not clear enough that we're suspending the rules. So I think. Uh, in the interest of clarity, I'd like to take a, have a motion to suspend first, and then we'll act on the motion. That's sure. So moved. Second. Uh, discussion on the motion to suspend. Council vote. So I, you know, I don't, I'm not familiar with all those names, and we weren't privy to the list of names earlier, but in terms of just suspending the rules, I just caution us about doing that, because I'm not sure I understand what the, I, in terms of the cable company, I get it, <laughs> or the cable <laughs> committee, because we've been wanting that for a very long time. But I, I'm not sure that I see, you know, committee work can still be ongoing, uh, even if a vote is not necessarily taken. Work can be happening while we move towards a, a, a goal, uh, and those people can still participate in the process. Um, so it, I'm, I'm just always hesitant when we deviate from our processes, because I think that is, uh, something that throws people off and for whatever reason, right, wrong, or indifferent, it tends to, you know, go to the trust issue that we seem to have in town. So I, I'm happy to support this and I'm grateful for all these people for stepping up, but I just wanted to put on record that I am hesitant uh, in moving as quickly tonight because of the rule suspension. Other comments? I see none. Uh, voting on the motion to suspend the rule that we post at the first meeting and vote only at the second meeting so as to allow us to vote to, uh, on these nominations at tonight's meeting. All in favor? Opposed? Unanimous? Uh, comment on the main motion. Peter. Just for clarity, um, Councilor Ray Biden, you said, you mentioned your loose name. Which, which committee was that? The cable. superintendent? Or did I, did I not hear that? No, correct? that was correct. That was correct. Yep. Well, on cable on which, TV. On, on cable, cable TV. TV. Um, and so just to add, I, I thought that would get a couple of people's interests, yeah. um, but it's actually a very nice fit. Um, I mean, of course, she's a resident. She's eligible to participate in any committee of the, of the town as a citizen. But um, as the executive for our school department, they have control over one of the two channels that we have. So bringing her in and her access to resources to share in the cable television um, kind of uh, direction, I think is a, it's a great combination. Can you read the guy? It was yeah. quick, so can you just read the other names? Sure. On the table? Art Dillon, uh, you probably know him from Chamber of Commerce, uh, Concerts yeah. in the Park, 
Doug Forrester and Ben Howard. Um, I remember Doug from years ago, but I don't remember exactly his background. Um, no, I'm sorry, Doug is actually a Spectrum uh, former executive or senior level manager at Spectrum. Okay. And everyone knows Ben as yeah. the, uh, a frequent uh, visitor to the Chambers. Yeah. Uh, Julie Kuchenberger, Richard Lazell, and Mark Maroon. Richard recently um, retired from the Zoning Board of Appeals, um, as well as I believe Mark Maroon did as well. Um, and I know Mark has uh, done some cable television work in the past. That's how I met him and Kevin Freeman, actually. So. Can you, oh, I'm sorry. Can you just repeat the shellfish? Was it just the one, or was it? Yeah, um, it wasn't shellfish. It was coastal waters. Oh, coastal waters. Was and it was to uh, remove Michael Lynch for non-attendance, promote Calvin Bailey and Maria Odlin to full voting members, and to name Peter Angus as an alternate. And if I could make a comment, that committee has not been able to meet to even yeah. Yeah. organize, as yeah, you are well know. aware. So I'm they'll aware. be yeah. happy to know that they have a full, <laughs> <laughs> full uh, yeah. membership now. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. Uh, other comments, questions? Councilor Foley. So I don't want to be the, the negative one tonight, but I guess I will a little bit in that, again, I'm, I'm going to support this because I don't feel like these are there's anything super contentious here, but I want us to be aware that sometimes we have certain committees that are highly uh, what's the, competitive and sought after. People really want, like if it's planning board or something, people really want to get on those committees. And if we uh, do things outside of the realm of our normal operating procedures, um, and in this particular case, we had a, a non-standing committee member vote on moving this forward. Is that correct? No. 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 Okay. So what was? Okay. I thought I was on. I was under the impression that she attended but attended did not meeting. vote. Okay. Was it, was there a quorum? <coughs> yes, there are two yeah. of us. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Then I guess I misunderstood the intent of the email. Email, and then it doesn't even. What I'm saying doesn't mean it doesn't, doesn't isn't relevant. So it doesn't matter. <coughs> Uh, no, the, the purpose of the email was to allow for a, when a person is absent, uh, the chair can sit in ex officio on any of the committees and vote. Right. But we don't have the authority to have the chair up or anyone else appoint a person to, to sit in uh, and vote when the chair would not be able to be there himself or herself. So. That, that was the reason for the email. But there two, two of you were there, so it was fine. Yes. Yeah, okay, yeah. so right. non-issue. Uh, and if I Get could right. just, because it came up <coughs> with uh, Councillor Hayes and with Councillor Foley about like Councillor Hayes not knowing, you know, that there were concerns with Scarborough Beach, whatever, just remember that all of these committee meetings are open to all councillors at any time, and I certainly encourage you to follow the notes and whatever that come out of that if you can't make the meetings or if you have an interest in them, because you can certainly attend as I did, and I don't, you know, I, I didn't vote, but I attended so I could make my thoughts known. So sure. just a reminder of that yeah. to all yeah. councilors. Councilor, well, I, I think that's a little disingenuous too. I mean, some of us have jobs, you know, eight to five, mm -hmm. and so it's a little hard. And two, I think it is important, and it goes to the trust issue, because we didn't have the names, and this is supposed to be public comment, folks in the audience and our constituents didn't know the names on the list. So that is a problem. It, there needs to be transparency so folks know what we're talking about, who's on the list, so if anybody had an objection, they could be here to have a conversation. Councilor Gary. Um, I, I'm sorry that you, you took offense at my comment. It wasn't, what, it wasn't meant in that manner at all. Uh, we Hell all like have, it. we all, well, I'm sorry, but we all have jobs. Um, Some of us don't have flexibility to well, be here eight to five. So, well, but, but we do have notes and whatever that come out of the meetings. We got the, the notes today. No, no, I'm talking about committee meetings. And well, I'm not we're talking about this committee. Right, Excuse me. Right. Okay, uh, that's fine. One person should be uh, recognized at a time. Yeah, thank you. But that, that's all. I mean, and I wasn't trying to make any disparaging comments by him. That was not my intent, but I do... So I do think that, you know, as council members, um, I know I keep up with, with notes and what's going on with various committees, um, just because I feel that that's my job, too. But anyway, that being said. The, the point is, we did not have the names until just now. No, and I understand that, but I'm also talking, referring to the other We're comment. talking about this specifically. Okay. We did not have the names tonight. That's what we're speaking to. It's It's... Just as we think about trust in our community, we didn't know, the community didn't know. 
that's something we should be aware of. Uh, any further discussion? Councilor Bailey. Just for reference, um, the appointments committee, for as long as I've been on this council, including my past tenures, have never pre-printed the names of any of the appointees because the committee always meets generally within the time frame where it can't be published within the agenda, and they always post it verbally at the first meeting. So that's why no one received it ahead of time, because that is our practice. Further comment? Councilor Hayes. I would like to make a recommendation that in the future, we try to have these names available ahead of time so the public can understand who's on the list and we can understand as council members before the night out who's on the list. That's a procedural change that I would recommend that we adopt. That, that is already the case. We already we post the names. Sean at, just said the names weren't posted. At, at, at the meeting at which we okay. have the first posting, the, the names are available and then we vote at the second meeting. We're so the public those. knows, but we're suspending the rules in this circumstance because of the unusual circumstance where uh, committees aren't able to meet. Do you yeah. understand? Bill, I understand. Do you understand how that how, what the perception of the public there, is? There is this special circumstance. Councilor Caiazzo. So I, I don't, I don't want to add fuel to the fire, but I, I find it interesting that we're talking about the suspension of rules for an appointments committee yet during budget season and other discussions we suspended rules and procedures to accommodate people's need for longer periods of time. So if we're going to hold ourselves accountable to process, it needs to be process, period, not discretionary uh, removal and discretionary acceptance. I don't see the challenge here. I, we're not talking about, we're talking about volunteering positions in, in the town of Scarborough. Uh, if you're uncomfortable with the, if a counselor is uncomfortable with this position, vote in the opposition. Other comments? Councilor Foley. Um, yeah, and I, I, look, I wasn't trying to start up Ornest Desk for, <laughs> for real. Uh, and, and again, these particular appointments I don't think are uh, necessarily contentious, but I have seen committees in the past that have been very contentious. Um, and so that, just stating that I'm a little uncomfortable with the way it went, I'm happy to know that now that it was a quorum, I was mistaken, um, you know, and I'm happy to approve these and I'm extremely happy and pleased that you got the cable committee going. That's fantastic. Thank you. Um, I'll leave it at that. Thank you. Councilor Bailey. I just wanted to mention that I think Councilor Hayes' comment regarding about future postings in advance, I will definitely take that into consideration and do my best. Thank you. Further comment? Councilor Garrion. Uh, and, and I mean, I, I absolutely understand what Councilor Hayes is saying about the um, appointments committee stuff tonight. My reference was also to uh, the um, parking issue prior to, the, and, and it's just, again, it's just a heads up to any of us to just stay up to date on what's going on with various committees. That was the only, my only. Thank you, other comments? Seeing none, we're voting on the uh, appointments committee nominations to approve the recommendations. All in favor? Opposed? Thank you. Uh, Non-action items. Standing committee and special committee reports and liaison reports. Let's st Chris, start down with you. So, uh, energy committee. Uh, I think we met uh, private, uh, prior, prior to this to talk with uh, a group on carbon tax credits. Um, that I, I may have neglected to report that from the last the last uh, meeting. Long range planning has met twice. Long-range planning is in the mode now where they're, we're having a, a meeting to discuss specifically the comprehensive plan and then a separate standalone meeting uh, to discuss regular long-range planning business. So the meeting on May 24th was to look at comprehensive plan updates. We looked at a draft for uh, baseline infrastructure. We looked at draft for municipal revenue, uh, draft for um, economic development through a, a SEDCO's uh, input. Uh, and talked a little bit about uh, public process. Uh, those recommendations were discussed in long-range planning, kicked back for um, uh, adjustments and um, uh, back to the consultant. And then on June 1st, long-range planning met for regular business. 
We discussed the uh, Haggis Parkway warehousing issue that was in front of the council today for public hearing, and we reviewed SEDCO's uh, Vision Committee's economic development policies that will also be uh, forwarded along to the uh, consultant for the comprehensive plan. Councilor Nothing this evening. Councilor Gettery. Uh, yeah, a couple of things. Senior Advisory Board, um, I was not able to make their last meeting because of work commitments, um, but they are working on an AARP friendly designation for the town, uh, and they've started to include other committees and groups um, in town to get involved with that, so I'm, I'm really happy with that, and that, that was definitely one of my, my personal goals for us to try to get that. Um, <clears throat> Greater Portland Council of Governments did their uh, summit, the annual summit. I went, uh, Councillor Diamond was there. Um, I did a big one minute presentation. You should see me on the senior property tax. You have to do a one minute presentation, but anyway. Uh, at Jay Chase did a presentation uh, for the town. It was very well attended. Uh, it was at St. Joseph's College. Um, and I did get some good feedback after my really fast one minute presentation. Some other towns, again, are very interested in what we're doing, so stay tuned. Um, I'm uh, expecting to have some people going to be reaching out to me on that. Um, and communications, please plan to meet briefly. I'm looking at Edie and Sean on the 14th at 5.30. Uh, basically to go over the draft that we did and also I would like to talk um, also about how we could work with the uh, cable since we now have a cable committee <laughs> ongoing uh, and we will have an ordinance meeting the following week the 21st and I just to let the public know one of the uh, Things we're going to discuss, it's just going to be a discussion. I'd like to get feedback on signs, sign, sign, since we've gone through a couple of uh, sign issues in town. Um, and there'll be a couple other things that I can't remember off the top of my head, but that's it. Thank you. Councilor Fuller. Uh, two next week, but nothing since we last met. Thank you. Uh, so the Affordable Housing Committee, excuse me, Scarborough Housing Alliance met. Um, we did not have a quorum, uh, but we did have a very healthy discussion around um, what kind of guidance we can give to a developer who wishes to build a, um, a home um, to be owner occupied uh, with, um, with the, using their, to meet the, the obligation for an affordable um, density bonus. Um, and we really struggled with it. Um, there's still some work to do there, um, and we're um, uh, going to be focusing on that in, in future meetings. We didn't. We didn't come away with a decision about how we could definitively um, put into a legal document that um, that this house uh, was required to to be um, sold to someone who's a, affordable eligible. We also had trouble defining um, how to price the the home, and so we have a little bit more work to do, or considerable more work to do. I think there to clarify. Um, um, Historic Preservation Implementation Committee meeting met committee met last night. Um, that was our last meeting before our summer hiatus. Um, one update that I wanted to report out was around the historic property list that I mentioned last time I reported <coughs> out. Um, that's been discussed to the past of the planning department. Um, the planning department is planning to do some outreach this summer. Um, and uh, just to clarify, that was around making some corrections to the, to the list that we currently have in our ordinance around um, some houses that are misidentified and um, others that um, we can drop off because they've been um, uh, rebuilt um, and then um, and, a, and some that were potentially missed originally. So there's going to be some outreach this summer and then it will pass the ordinance for the, for the full process. That's all. Councilor Bayweiser. Thank you. Uh, appointments and negotiations met this past week. You saw the product at least on the appointment side. Um, I will have, I just got the list from the clerk, I will have an updated list next week. Uh, there are several, still several other committees that um, would love to have a volunteer join them, and I'll have that list. I um, did want to mention that, um, so now we are um, taking part in at least being informed by staff around our negotiations with any bargaining unit and contracts on the town side. 
Um, we did receive an update from the HR director and the manager regarding the police bargaining unit's contract, which has been entered into. Keep in mind that um, we're there as an um, executive level overviewer um, for that. So the committee did not, uh, we met in an executive session and, and heard uh, regarding the confidential nature of what they're asking for. Um, so, but we did not vote on any type of recommendations because one, I think the full council needs to be informed. And so the goal of our committee is that somewhere around the week of June 20th, maybe the week before, um, the appointments committee will have a, um, an, an executive session to go over the final pieces of that contract. Um, and we'd like to invite all of the town councilors there. Of course, we will only have three that do any vote um, on recommendation to the full council, but I, I think you all need to be there so you can hear the, the nuances of what's being requested, which they're pretty typical requests um, in labor contracts. So, um, I mean, everything from pay increases to, I mean, it's quite a spectrum, nothing too confidential, at least the terms. But um, so um, I actually may not be in attendance if it's the week of the 20th um, because I go to my Boy State program, mm -hmm. it's my 35th year. Um, so the ch I might ask the chair to actually reside over that committee. Uh, with Chris um, and to run that. So we'll see, and I'll you know, send out a um, uh, notice to everyone when, that, when I do get that information. And by the way, if you want to know what some of, the, some of those items are now, I'm happy to share them confidentially. I won't put them in writing, um, but I, I'll be happy to take anybody's phone call if you want some details. Thank you. Uh, Metro Regional Coalition uh, uh, met in uh, Portland. Uh, and uh, we are continuing to work on homelessness issues uh, and how the uh, region can tackle that. Uh, uh, as Councillor Katerina said, I attended the GPCOG annual meeting. Uh, the seminars there were excellent uh, uh, for regional issues. Um, and the planning board has the Scarborough Downs matter back up before it for Jay for the next meeting. Uh, for pod one or yes. phase one, yes. for phase one, which is uh, nearest to route one. Town Mr. manager's report. I'm sorry, Mr. Chair. Yes. I'm sorry to interrupt. I, I meant to, and I apologize to everyone, I meant to mention that uh, the town council will be having a informational talk to a counselor table at the election on June 12th. Um, and there are three of us who will be able to fill in on some of the busiest times there will at least be information out there. So, thank you. I forgot to mention that. Thank you. Town Manager's report. Yes, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I passed my opportunity last meeting, as I recall, it was running late, and I think we all had a sense of getting out, so... Um, we still do. I, I appreciate that, but I do want to provide a couple of updates, if I could, so uh, I'll move as quickly as I can. These are kind of, I'll characterize them as project updates. Um, Eastern Trail Project is moving right along. Uh, moving through final design, next steps um, will be to communicate back out with the eight different landowners that we've already had um, communication with through the years uh, to secure right of way and in most cases easements. But um, those are discussions that uh, that will be going on through the course of the summer. And the schedule we're on is to bid this out over the winter and construction to begin uh, spring next year. So that's always been the schedule. And we seem to be right on target. Public safety building, a lot has been happening in, in this regard. Uh, I think the council may be aware uh, that we did hold a public hearing. It happened on the same evening, April 25th, as you're hearing here, uh, to receive additional public input. There was some really terrific input provided at that meeting, uh, such that uh, the design of the roadway through the park was modified fairly significantly uh, to accommodate some of the concerns raised. And to that end, that plan was presented this week uh, to the planning board. Uh, it's my understanding that the project did receive favorable advisory opinion uh, from the planning board. Uh, and so uh, that piece is, is done. We're also in process with state permitting as we speak, and that's uh, always known to, uh, known to be the kind of the biggest question mark in our timeline. We're still hopeful that we're looking at a September 1 start date, uh, but by the end of this month in June, we will have a guaranteed maximum price for the site work, which is a big question mark. That's a complicated and expensive piece of the project. Um, and then by the end of uh, July, we'll actually have a, a total guaranteed maximum price for the entire project. So again, everything is lining up to be on that schedule, waiting for, for permits. 
Uh, also next week, I will be issuing an RFP for the relocation of the three uh, single family homes that the town owns and looking for folks interested in taking those, uh, relocating them elsewhere, ideally in town, uh, not putting that restriction on. And I think Councilor Rowan reported at the last meeting, the uh, Scarborough Housing Alliance has chosen not to further complicate that by attaching any kind of covenants or, or the like. Um, so we're, we're, we're pleased uh, everything's uh, really falling into place there. The LED streetlight upgrade is about two-thirds complete. Uh, I don't know if you've seen the bucket trucks around town, but they're kind of caravans, two-person teams. Uh, we expect in about 10 days they'll be complete, uh, kind of what we call phase one, and then uh, we'll be moving right into the residential neighborhoods. Those require their different types of fixtures, and so it requires a little uh, different logistical approach. Um, so I don't know if you uh, just pay attention as you're driving around town at night to see if you can see a difference in the light quality. <laughs> I would note that the major routes, Route 1, uh, Payne Road, um, Pleasant Hill, those have not been done yet and that's because they get a higher wattage, and so they'll do those all at once, again, sometime in the next 10 days. And lastly, paving is, uh, has begun and will continue through this month, and I'll mention uh, the projects on, the, on, on slate for this time of year. Commerce Drive from Evergreen Farms up to Route 1, uh, Down East Lane, Prospector Lane, Susan Avenue, and portions of Blue, Old Blue Point Road, mm -hmm. Winnix Neck Road, Payne Road, and Broad Turn Road. Uh, we expect to have uh, nearly all of that complete this month. We have a window of opportunity with our paving contractor that we're trying to, uh, to hit with them. If not, we'll be looking at probably late fall by the time we can get them back here. Also, the Board of Assessment Review uh, met on May 22nd. This was the tax appeal uh, remand um, from the Spirit Court back to the local Board of Assessment Review. Uh, they uh, have scheduled another meeting on June 12th at 1 o'clock in these chambers to make a final decision, and that decision will be complete with uh, written findings of fact, conclusions, and their final decision. Um, so we're anxious to get that, uh, that known, and as soon as it is, I'll share that out with council and the public. Also, just, uh, I guess, two last things. A uh, little forewarning for your next meeting on June 20. These aren't certain, but uh, Jay Chase is in receipt of two different contract zone requests. Uh, it goes to him initially for kind of a complete list review, so I'm saying it this may be a little prematurely, but just to put you on notice, the first one uh, would be for a new, uh, a brand new contract zone for the Clear, Clearview Condo Association. It's, it essentially would allow them to do some residential development on lots still owned by the association along Port, Portland Farms Road. Councilor Bayline might be interested in, in this one since he lives in the neighborhood. Sure, sure that's a vacant lot. Uh, it's actually, yeah, it's a vacant lot and it's uh, yeah. potentially as many as three building lots, as yeah. I understand it. Uh, the other one is a uh, contract zone amendment request for Piper Shores. This is for them to build additional independent living units on property they have under option across the street. It's 45 acres of property that um, is located on the other side of Spurlink Road, but it is somewhat contiguous with their existing campus. Um, and the, the last piece that I believe is confirmed at this point, uh, the Pine Point Co-op, uh, there's a lot of history there and I'm starting to sift through it and understand it better myself, but uh, it's uh, potentially going to be sold, the shares of that sold to an individual. And there's a number of uh, the, the town has been uh, an active participant in the ownership of that property and has active um, uh, rights, if you will, or um, they need to come back for approvals and so on and so forth. So we'd like to come forward in a workshop format to introduce uh, the potential new buyer and some of their uh, questions and looking for support for the town. And lastly, just a reminder to the council and to the public, uh, starting next month, we move to your summer meeting schedule. So months of July and August, you'll meet only once. Uh, certainly if, if the need is there, I suspect you'll, you could meet more than that if you wished, but that will be July 18 and August 15. With that, I'm available for questions. Questions of the town manager? Seeing none, we'll go to councilor comments and Start down with Councilor Bayback. Uh, first, I want to uh, um, congratulate the uh, 
graduating class of 2018. I believe graduation is this weekend. I saw all the blooms out today. So good luck to them and be safe. Uh, can, you know, and thank you to the teachers and the parents and everyone who contributed um, to their success. Um, as I mentioned on the second meeting in June, I probably won't be here unless it's, there's something absolutely requires me uh, to come back from Waterville, but I will be away to the uh, American Legion's Boys State Program. I do that every year, half of 35 years. Um, and I always miss the exciting stuff up there when I do come back, like the year that the governor <laughs> made a pretty disparaging comment to a young man and his father. But uh, so I, I really like being there just to, just to see what happens when the governor comes. Um, but I also wanted to uh, thank uh, the volunteers. I think we lost a lot in the conversation around the appointments because we should be celebrating every person that wants to step forward um, and volunteer for this town. Um, I sent off an email to the, to the manager and to the uh, uh, chair tonight um, asking them to consider the continuation of the Municipal Volunteer of the Year Award that we started last year that we gave to Kevin Freeman for his dedication in the many committees. And I hope that we continue that because our volunteers, especially on those boards, which sometimes is not um, a lot of fun and can be very political, they should be thanked and awarded or uh, rewarded at least with an honor of being um, recognized. So uh, please thank everyone. We have plenty of uh, other committees. We still have room on the cable TV committee. I have one more full time, uh, full position and one alternate. I'm gonna still continue working on that, but we're excited. We will be meeting uh, soon um, on that. And then um, I just wanted to mention, you know, I, I, one of the things I've learned over the years in doing this so many years is that sometimes I'll go home and every once in a while I'll click through the cable TV channel and I watch the meeting. And I do a self-assessment about the comments that I make, the way I make it, as well as everyone else, you know. We all judge each other, I guess, in some way. And I really hope that everyone does that because I think that the reason why we're losing trust in the community isn't because of appointing um, members or volunteers tonight outside of the rules. It's the way that we talk to each other because it doesn't sound good. And that's where we're losing them. So I hope that people, and, it, and by the way, communication goes both ways. So if you're going to be pointing a finger, you better be looking in a mirror because it's going to be pointing back at you. And that's how I kind of look at it because I sat back and listened to as much as I could without being personal and it was not a good exchange. And that's got to stop. So thank you. Councilor Rowley. Nothing. Thank you. Councilor Rowley. Um, I also wanted to congratulate the graduates. Uh, it's a big time in their life and an exciting time and um, wish them the best of luck. Be safe, first and foremost. I also wanted to remind people to get out and vote next Tuesday. Um, your, your vote is your voice and uh, that's where you weigh in the most. And then lastly, I would just say I concur with uh, Councilor Bateman. I, I think that sometimes emotions get the best of us and we can all do better. Honestly, it was not my intent to stir any pots tonight, but just express concerns that I felt were legitimate and ask questions. And I have to feel safe to be able to do that. So uh, I hope that's also equally respected. Um, and that's it. Mm. Also, um, yeah, just again, a reminder that the uh, budget, school budget is up for a vote on June 12th, as well as um, a number of state, including uh, the primaries, political primaries. Mm. So hopefully people will show up. Um, if I have my number correct, we've had, I'm going to look at Tody, about a thousand people who voted absentee as of the end of day today. Great. Um, which, is down. which is not very many when you consider we have, what, over 15,000 registered voters in town. Um, so uh, I do know one of the choices in voting, you have yes, you have no, and you have don't show up. And that's a definite choice, is to not show up. but. Um, I've always said, if you don't show up, I don't want to hear you complaining. So, show up, vote, make your uh, voice known. Thanks. Thank you. Councilor Hayes. No, thank you. No comments. Uh, tomorrow is the last day for open voting for our June 12th uh, uh, election. Thursday. Uh, Friday and Monday are, as state law requires, uh, restricted uh, early voting. It's really uh, the concept of absentee voting when you uh, have a legitimate uh, reason to be absent uh, and unable to vote. Um, uh, the vote on June 12th, I think uh, uh, those of us who voted for this budget strongly support it. Uh, uh, I think the school budget is uh, incredibly 
strong, fiscally responsible, the best budget that uh, I have seen uh, the school produce from a fiscal responsibility point of view. It's a level services budget. Uh, it will result in diminished services if it's cut further. Uh, the town budget is also a level services budget. Uh, uh, and while the effect of the revaluation has been introduced as a, uh, uh, a confusing element, to be kind, uh, we all knew about it. Uh, and the actual increase is somewhere around 1.4 or less, because we have used conservative estimates. Uh, and uh, if the reval had not come along, I would not have supported several items in this budget. Uh, I would not have supported the inclusion of $350,000 uh, of reserve fund monies for which our rainy day fund is already amply uh, 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 available to, to meet whatever needs come from, comes from that uh, property tax lawsuit. Uh, I would not have expensed $369,000 worth of uh, uh, funds directed at the residential reval. Uh, that's a 10 to 15 year uh, occurrence, uh, and those are often capitalized. Uh, uh, those two items, as well as uh, the effort, and it was a good effort by the Finance Committee to, ca to uh, expense items that would normally be capitalized, but in an effort to be more fiscally responsible with our uh, treatment of our bond levels, uh, we uh, put those in the expense column. Uh, and uh, if uh, we had to get below 3% because there was no revaluation, uh, we would have done it. At least I would have been co quite confident of being able to do it with those particular items. But because we had a revaluation. We had the ability to uh, sock more money away in the reserve accounts. Uh, we had the ability to uh, expense a residential reval, which is a real bump in, in any budget, $369,000. And we had the ability to protect our bond totals by expensing uh, a whole series of items that would normally have been bonded. So uh, I think the public needs to know that. It's hard to get all that on a little placard uh, out there on the corner of the street. But that story has to be told. If you don't understand the effort that goes into the Finance Committee and then the seven members of the uh, Town Council, uh, as well as the Board of Education, then you don't understand that the budget uh, has been developed in an exceedingly responsible manner. Uh, and, uh, and supporting this budget is, uh, would be a, a very appropriate thing to do. Um, lastly, uh, I think I'd like to schedule for July 18th uh, a workshop on goals. Uh, we have uh, a goals document that was circulated that had some suggestions as to what would be action items on goals. I'll recirculate that so that people can be thinking about, well, how are we doing against the specific uh, uh, goals that we set? And we'll hold that at 6 o'clock, I guess, on July 18th. So uh, with that, I'll accept a motion. Move to second. adjourn. Second. All in favor. I think I nailed that. Thank you. Three for three. Did you? Yeah.